Welcome everyone, this is Denny and Carl with Get Wisdom and today we're going to continue with our channeling series and today we're going to go into uh, the very recent past with a, um, uh, an actor who probably would have had quite a, uh, a career in the film industry, uh, maybe even as a director. That's kind of where he was headed in his career path. And this is uh, the uh, fellow from Australia, uh, Heath Ledger. And he passed away uh, very unexpectedly at the early age of 28. And you have seen a, a bio of this fellow. Um, his, he became quite famous with his last role as the Joker in one of the Batman um, films. And um, we have a question about that in, in among the six questions that we have for Heath Ledger today. So, um, so... Carl and, and I will have a short discussion, and then Carl will channel uh, the light being Heath Ledger. Uh, we don't know whether he needed the spirit rescue, uh, but that he's our subject for today. And I want to welcome everyone, and w especially Carl, uh, who's been doing with this, doing this with us faithfully for every week for quite a while now. And so, thank you, Carl. Thanks for doing this with us. Well, thank you, Denny, for your support and help with this enterprise and. It's a multi-person um, outreach at this point, and we want that to grow and have others involved as well and really reach as many people on the planet as we can with the fundamental message. We need to be a participatory body of light beings here in physical form working together for common purpose to bring forward truth. And to help with a healing need that is very acute and critical to future human progress. We can't keep limping along like this because we've got headwinds and opposition. 
and we're in the dark. Most people have no idea what's really going on, what really runs the world, and what is waiting in our future that is being planned for us and not in our best interest. So I don't want to get off in a big speech here, but there's a serious purpose behind what we're doing. That, right. That's really what I want to get across. This yeah. isn't just a kind of like a tabloid Hollywood approach of going to famous people and, you know, kind of looking at the roadkill and seeing, you know, why they struggle and suffer and it came a cropper and, and had some demise that was, you know, all too unfortunate and, and, you know, commiserate and, and put it out there as a kind of spectacle for people. This, it's not at all what we're after. Mm -hmm. We really want to understand what he can teach us now as a being up in the heavenly realm, looking back down on his life and seeing us still here in the game and what he would tell us now about things that may be object lessons for us to learn from his hard-won life experience. And, and we found that very useful in doing so with a wide range of, of folks, yeah. all different ty types of people. And each human being has a story. They are a living witness to the human exercise and the human enterprise, their corner of it, and have much, thing, much wisdom that comes from being on the front lines, really. And that's what we're all doing. We're down in a kind of danger zone, taking on life, in the physical where we're fragile and we have dark forces working against us. So there are many, many lessons to learn. And this is a big learning curve that we're on. And part of why it's such a struggle, we're coming from behind, we're impaired in many ways, and we're in the dark. We come down disconnected from the Almighty, and that starts us off with a huge shock. I was just thinking this morning, I was out walking my puppy and thinking about the fact that when you're born, you think of it as sort of coming into the world, and then you're with the loving parents. And what could be better? You're taken care of, you're nurtured, you're loved. But in actuality, you're undergoing the most profound separation there is, yeah. which is you are being taken away from God, who you're used to hanging out with and talking with all day long. This is the life of the light being. You know, and it sounds almost a little silly to talk about it in this, this way, but I assure you that is the actual reality of our existence, and it's been there for eons. We've been existing as soul beings, living with creator and creator's love and embraced by creator and with the availability of creator constantly. Anytime we want to ask a question or share something about what we're thinking or doing and creator is right there and enjoying it with us and loving us constantly. So suddenly we come down and we're torn, torn away from everything that has mattered to us, because that's the big one, really. It's like your mother, your father, your whole family unit, all wrapped into one. Yeah, times, you know, times a million. Yeah, and, times a million. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, okay. Yeah. And, and suddenly, you don't have that. You have yourself, and you have some other people around you who you may have a deep soul connection with, but, but you know, once removed, because you don't know that even yet. No. You know, as a physical human, yeah. you have to learn who these people are yep. and get a feel for them yep. and see if you can trust them even, you yep. know, so it takes a while. And even then you don't know. And even then, yes. Yeah, because, yeah, because you could have oh, a karmic past with them and you live your whole life and never realize yeah. that, oh gosh, I've done this six times with this person already yep. in various this roles. Is, and, uh, yeah, this, this is the land of rough edges. Yeah. where people are kind of at their worst because they've all been in this dilemma of disconnect and 
And that does things to us, and we end up harming one another, harming ourselves, and so on. So, so I don't, I don't want to say any more about that. But uh, th- we often get discussions about these sort of deep issues, and as a channeler, that is largely what I am after personally. Right. That I want to see what is the take home message. Yeah, and surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, the message from all these light beings has been remarkably similar. They're all looking at the same thing. They're all telling us the same thing. They have a different way of looking at it, perspectives, yep. because they're individuals. But by and large, you know, we're not we're not finding that in these channeling series that there's dramatic differences from one to the other. I mean, there, they, there's yep. a kind of commonality in terms of 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 the message that's being for, brought forth. One thing I th- I found interesting about Heath Ledger is that. He, you know, the people who knew him reported this this positivity about him and this c- creative urge. He was intensely uh, interested in documenting things with camera and film. Throughout his, you know, as soon as he as soon as he got to where he could operate a camera or video camera, he just was documenting his life, experimenting with with you know imagery and, and this whole thing. And he always, and he really maintained a positive attitude as, as a youngster throughout throughout all of that. You know, even going into you know. Hollywood and that whole scene, you know, he he never became daunted um, by much. Um, it was only in the last few years or the last few months of his life that there was kind of like some darkness that was kind of becoming evident in in his life. Um, but he he was amazing in so far as that that creative edge, that creative in, uh, curiosity and um, energetic level w- was maintained at such a high level throughout his whole life, and. And he was quite a spark. He was very charismatic. People were drawn to him, and um, and he had some, you know, he had some good breaks, you know, in his career. Um, so I, I think he's going to be in, he's going to be interesting uh, subject from that perspective. It's just, um, you know, what was the drive? What uh, it, it was so intense that that they said that he couldn't even sleep. He would just stay up because he was so curious about life. And uh, in a very positive way, you know, uh, and the whole film thing and, and acting. And, um, and I think ultimately he wanted to become a director. That was his, mm-hmm. his, uh, his idea. But now, but now he's going to be, uh, you know, he's a light being and he's going to be telling us about the human condition and, you know, the challenges before us. And, and we'll probably hear something similar to what we've heard from some of the other uh, channeling subjects that we've had. Well, it's kind of like, me starting out <laughs> with this kind of uh, rant about, <laughs> you know, darkness and so on. You know, people are coming here to, you know, see something interesting. Maybe he was an idol of theirs and so yeah. on. And and here I'm starting out with this, you know, this uh, march to the scaffold uh, introduction. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and and I I'm sorry about that on one level because it it's unfortunate and. I know people don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to live underneath a cloud. But this explains why we get a similar message about some of the big issues in our opposition, which is what I was alluding to. You know, and and I was just thinking as you, you were speaking just now that it's sort of like we're all living in a house that's on fire. So when we go up to the light and ask people about their lives, they might start talking about when the fire reached their bedroom and, you know, what it's like to be surrounded in smoke. And what about, you know, things getting so hot, you have to flee. And what about when you lose your possessions, you know, because they're destroyed. And, you know, so we're getting various takes on human suffering and tragedy but the ultimate backstory is our house is on fire. Right. What else are they going to talk about? And right. it's a rather urgent matter. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know, right. because to, you know, to talk about, you know, when your next picnic is scheduled and all that is, it's all well and good. But meanwhile, your house is on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so that's guess. why we tend to get those messages coming through. And it's partly because we know this that they can speak to it. So as a channeler, if I were totally naive and thought everything is wonderful, 
I would never hear anything negative ever from anyone we channel. They would not be allowed to because that would be leading me, priming me with new information I'm not entitled to know yet. Wow. So, so we have to what a frustrating, learn What a frustrating law. position that would be in. Because well, they, they this, come from a position of love. And, you know, can you imagine talking to someone, their house is on fire, and you can't tell them? That's right. And there's channelers out there right now talking to advanced beings who have to remain mum because the channeler doesn't see it, doesn't believe it. And won't and, ask about it. And won't ask about it. And so they're not allowed to bring it up. And, of course, that, that perpetuates the illusion the person is in. That everything is wonderful. Yeah. But this is why the responsibility is on us. Right. So what I would say to the people struggling with, you know, are these people really nuts or are they just yeah, a little nutty right tree. now? Or, you know, <laughs> what is it? What I'd say is think about this very, very carefully. Yeah. Because it does really matter. And, and, look, and look at the evidence. You know, look, look at the, um, the facts of the world, if you will. You know, are things getting better? You know, is 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 geopolitics or your or your nation's politics? Is that going the way you want? Is there is your spiritual life and the spiritual life of your uh, fellow family, friends, and neighbors? I mean, it, all of those things. There's there's indicators in all of those areas, all of the human institutions about the state of the condition of things. You know, yeah. and it, and if and if they're getting better, if we're if it's on a really positive trajectory, and that's your conclusion. Well, then that, that's evidence that perhaps what we're sharing here is not on the up and up. But if, but if, the, but if, you, if you look out into the world and you see that things aren't getting better, you know, things are, are we're in trouble, you know, if, if that's your conclusion, then maybe we might be on to something because there's an explanation here that's being offered up for why that is the case. And, more, and even more importantly, what to do about it. You know, not just be an observer and going, wow, yeah, you're right. The, the world's not getting better, you know. Well, the next logical question is, well, what do we do about it? You know, and that's why you and I are here, because along Absolutely. with all this channeling and everything, there's an answer to the problem. So that's what we're pursuing and pr promoting here is the answer to the problem. Absolutely. That, that beautifully stated, because that's the bottom line. We're wanting solutions. And in whatever way light beings can help us to define those, what they look like, what are the pieces, what can we do and what can we do now, and anything they can offer for a better path to get us where we need to go. These are the kinds of things we're after here. And they, they had their struggles as human beings and in response to all this, we're alluding to that things aren't perfect and there's reasons why. So they can speak to it now from a place of, of higher perspective and awareness in a way we can't see. Yeah. We have our own kind of concept of it. Those who are looking at some of the more bizarre things that go on that don't have another explanation really that makes sense other than there's an active interference with human uh, culture. And so, you know, we'll, we'll see what Heath has to say here. Okay. But I would venture to uh, predict he will have been touched by this personally also. Right. This darkness. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Shall we go ahead and start? Yeah. And we can't go wrong because he knows about it anyway. He, he's seen it in, among his compatriots. So he's yet another witness to life and from a high perch yeah. and, and can see the panorama and see the past as well as future, at least the projected future, which is very changeable as always is the case. But OK, so we'll get started and I will take a moment to connect to creator of all that is. This is how I do my channeling because I want to exclude any kind of imposter, any inauthentic source. Most channelers don't take that precaution and they get into trouble and end up being co-opted by an imposter. It's usually an extraterrestrial psychic 
hearing their intuitive outreach and then answering the call. And once they do that, it forms a kind of a friendship, if you will. And the divine realm has to let that happen because it's human free will. They can't stop it. They can't block it. Just like in ordinary daily life, if you go into business with someone who is unsavory and has a criminal nature and so on, the light won't save you from the consequences because free will lets that person, you know, dip his hand in the till or whatever it might happen to uh, cause trouble down the line. So you one has to be vigilant and mindful of the true nature of things. And one of the facts that we have to deal with all the time is more than 90% of channelers are reaching a false uh, source that comes through, often pretending to be a divine agent right. by name. And that is allowed also. I mean, you can go in costume and pretend to be Archangel Michael. You know, God isn't going to strike you down. You know, <laughs> you have free will to do that. It doesn't mean you might not get into a little bit of trouble and cause some negative karma for yourself if you exploit people and you get away with it and it, you know, drags them off of a spiritual path or something. And that's true of the interlopers messing with us in this way right now. But in the meantime, this is a back and forth, a tug of war that's going on. So I'm just very scrupulous in what I do. And this is the reason why. So I'll put protection around the work and, and then connect with the light being Heath Ledger. So he can speak through me and, then you will hear him announce his presence. Okay, great. Thank you. This is Heath Ledger speaking. Thank you for joining us. Were you able to transition successfully, and was your death due to a drug mixing or overdose, or did something else happen to cause your death? I was unable to transfer without considerable help in the form of a spirit rescue. And we do want to credit you and your compatriots for the fine work you do in helping so many struggling human spirits find their way back to the light. This is the most dreadful of circumstances that even serving humanity by coming into the fray and helping advance the cause of the divine, then are unable to return home once their duty is done and their physical body gives out for whatever reason. To be trapped in limbo is a devastating circumstance and keeps people sidelined and interrupts their soul journey in a major way. It adds much damage to the soul and will further keep them sequestered. It is much like living a prison sentence. And this only serves the darkness for those souls are needed. They are needed in the light and they are needed back in the physical ultimately once again. The longer people are in limbo and being subjected to isolation, or even greater torment, which usually is the case, the greater the damage is done. Anyone who contributes to rescuing these hapless souls deserves the highest accolades and divine grace as reward for their dedication and service to the truth of the divine. My weakness in not surmounting that hurdle of transition, which normally can be very rapid, seamless, and only an expansion of awakening joy, was because of my lack of preparation my lack of spiritual orientation and the abuse of 
my body that was orchestrated to happen by the dark spirit realm primarily. This was aided and abetted by some people around me, enabling me to obtain access to prescription drugs that are inherently quite dangerous. All such medications are a stopgap measure of limited or no benefit. They are a kind of token attempt by the healthcare establishment to deal with the worsening of human emotional life, but are a surface consequence that has little merit beyond ha having a placebo action to give people false hope. Things can be better with the act of taking a pill at regular intervals that will do some kind of magic for them. This is largely an illusion in terms of the psychiatric medications. There can be a blessing from having severe delusional thinking and terrifying hallucinations suppressed for a time. So those antipsychotic agents can be a blessing for those ready to jump from a high window or end their life in some other fashion or who may act savagely towards others thinking they are wrongly to blame for a person's unhappiness and torment. But to deal with sleep deprivation or melancholy moods by putting chemicals into your body is a kind of folly, aided and abetted by an impotent pharmaceutical industry lacking an understanding of where the problems truly come from and where true solutions need to be sought. In my case, it was my undoing because I indulged myself to excess through a kind of desperation, being unable to obtain adequate sleep while engaged in a high powered career, demanding mental acuity, great focus and concentration to do steady learning over many, many days and hours of very complex scripts in some cases and having to perform with all of the nuance and grace and elegance of artistry to suit a particular character in keeping with the production at hand in situations where the character might be a polar opposite of my own makeup and inclinations. This is the great gift of the best actors and actresses that they are able to subsume themselves in a character on the printed page and bring it to life. Understand in a very, very deep way what that individual might be feeling as well as thinking because the emotions are the wellspring of a drama that is believed by the audience. Words are not alone. An artful recitation, even with inflection of the voice, is not enough to convey authenticity. You see this quite readily on the occasion when a high-level motion picture 
bring someone on board often to pay a favor who is not up to the challenge of living that character, bringing it to life. That is done through an emotional connection of surrendering the self for a time to what is taking place. That I was able to do and was a talent. And to do so created heavy demands. And with the strain on top of not having a normal and healthy way to rest, decompress, and rejuvenate myself energetically, it caused a further desperation within me because of the conflict it posed in not giving my best performance. And this burden grew to the point I became increasingly desperate and reckless in adopting anything that might bring relief. And this caused me to engage in the ingestion of multiple psychoactive prescription drugs, which is medically inadvisable and would not be done by a practicing physician. I happen to have the resources to obtain such things through a back door, so to speak. And this is what led to my downfall. It was my own choosing up to a point, willing to be reckless out of desperation. The desperation, however, was not created by me. It was created by a spirit possession and a conspiracy, in fact, instrumented by an extra ter extraterrestrial spirit working for the hidden extraterrestrial cohort seeking control of humanity and launching project after project of catastrophe, delay, confusion, corruption, contamination, and heartbreak in as many ways as they can devise. They are clever beings. They even can manipulate things they poorly understand to work in their favor. And that is true of the dark spirits. They know this consciousness is a force. They know their own beings can become spirits and inhabit the same energetic plane of existence. And they cynically enlist them to commandeer the dark spirits and weaponize them more intensely and more deliberately to target individuals of high value to their enterprise, enterprise to commandeer, to subvert, and to capture in a way that further leads them towards destruction. This is the height of cynicism, that they are impervious to any love feelings or concern whatsoever about the plight of their compatriots lost in limbo themselves, but only wish to order them about. 
and cause this dilemma for other beings. They have no positive regard for humanity or individual humans and are quite willing to do anything to make them fail. They delight in human suffering and take great pleasure and pride as an architect of human suffering and catastrophe. Their spirits share their perspective and are quite efficient in recruiting and deploying the fallen angelic spirits that abound in the earth plane and savagely attacked human beings because they are dependent on their energy for survival. They are a parasitic scourge that has been essentially disenfranchised by the light because of their depravity and their unwillingness to return to the light and pay their dues, so to speak, through learning and hard work to overcome the harm they have caused. As long as they believe in their mission, they are doomed. This is the path the dark extraterrestrials are on. This is the path they are creating for you as human beings by separating you from your heritage as originating from creator directly. This they do not understand, nor would they value. You are losing your link, your spiritual awareness. If you let them snuff it out, your fate will be like mine or worse. Okay, thank you. With the energy level and creative drive you had during your incarnation, would it be fair to say that you are among those considered shooting stars who just burn out naturally as evidenced by having this energetic and creative condition and also having a short lifespan? Yours is a nice hypothesis that is espoused by many, seeing this phenomenon over and over and over again, as though one can have too much talent, too much success, and in effect burn out like a shooting star. So it reaches great heights and great intensity and creates a splash, but then will burn out quickly and ultimately perish before their time. This is not the ordinary trajectory of greatness. The trajectory normally for greatness in whatever measurement you might be using that of talent, that of great intellect, will only lead to more greatness if it is following a divine path. That is the trajectory of the light beings. It is the trajectory of creator itself to only get better, to grow in capability and in the expression of power in novel ways that only enhance and do not undermine. So to see a shining star that burns out only to die young and in some tragic way gives rise to the wrong 
interpretations. The take-home message is to not turn away from talent and making a contribution, even on the world stage, if that is within your reach. It is not being a moth to a flame that could be fatal. If done with a spiritual focus and alignment, to be on a spiritual path means to be in balance, to not surrender to the appeal to ego, to take over seriously the adulation of the celebrity, to begin to feel you are larger than life and somehow deserving of special treatment simply because you own a certain name and have achieved a certain recognition through your efforts. Celebrity, on one hand, is deserved, and rightly so, for one's contributions. Most talented people work quite hard to cultivate their image, to hone their skills, to practice and practice and practice yet again their craft, whatever it might be. And only then venture forth in public view and appear as a largely finished product, almost magical, stepping out into the limelight and giving a world-class performance. But you can be sure they did not do this at the outset. There were many long hours in development behind the world-class display of ability. To keep one's balance and objectivity is key. This the divine traveler can do because they are aware of the might of creator and will always be humble with recognition of that contrasting difference. They will see however exalted their status might become. It is only good fortune they are not so hindered as others around them. Most people are constrained quite heavily to lack power, to lack reach, to even lack discernment. And with meager talent, this is the dilemma of human existence to be brought low in effect, coming into a physical body, unable to contain a light being in full expression. So something must go. There is no room for much of the soul to be expressing itself. And in a faulty container with faulty sensing, faulty physical manipulation capabilities, the range of accomplishments will be quite constrained. It is only in contrast to those worse off that you will shine. The person in spiritual alignment will have an inner knowing and a perspective that this is so because they see the blazing light of creator beyond themselves and know that in comparison, they are but a small semblance of a part of divine possibility. And it will not go to their head in the same way as someone who has no such awareness, but only sees themselves compared to others, that they outshine. 
and then believes they are in some way on a pinnacle of greatness, but which is largely undeserved as far as personal credit is concerned. The true way people come on the scene as shooting stars is that they have a life plan to do this. They are bestowed with talent purposefully by creator. It comes from create creator's grace and also to some extent owing to the individual's prior achievements and capabilities to make them a suitable candidate for the role. But the greatness on display is in part theirs and in part enhanced by creator to be available to them during a physical incarnation. Whereas most others around them are fully closed off from their own talents and their own prior achievements. And in comparison, look like dummies. But we can assure you they are not. They are every bit as magnificent and possessed of greatness in many dimensions as the greatest of the shining stars you might see on the silver screen. The reason for the shortened trajectory is not that people cannot handle it. It is that they are attacked relentlessly by the darkness to put out their light. There are many ways that can be done, even from within the person themselves through an inner corruption. There is direct and indirect manipulation always ongoing with any person of talent that comes on the scene. Those who are spiritually quite strong will fare better, last longer, and may be more successful because their light goes undimmed and they have the luxury of lengthy experience to cultivate their image and develop their message and choose their projects in a way that leads to further enhancement and growth. When people fizzle in a sense and appear to lose their edge, become involved in worse and worse projects that are a poor showcase to begin with for their greatest strengths. It is not so much an error in judgment as in a corruption that ensues to drag them down, to lessen their discernment and divert and distract them in ways to make them increasingly vulnerable to bad decisions and bad advice. And many temptations to become diverted as they will be offered again and again substances of abuse through people coming into their inner circle for a time and dangling such things in front of them with encouragement to indulge themselves to take a rest, to have a better way to relax. That they are entitled 
to have a time out, a time of recreation and fun and so forth. It is a siren song that is often successful when people are living in an artificial environment of the performer put on a stage night after night with heavy pressure to excel on a constant basis and having many unhealed issues rumbling as is true for all human beings with no feasible way to obtain assistance, which is also true of all human beings because the existing institutions are limited in their benefit. So the shooting star is a tragic figure not because of their own shortcomings, their limited reach and viability, but through meeting opposition to drag them down and extinguish the flame. Okay, thank you. Do you have any kind of non-human legacy that influenced the way you conducted yourself while incarnated here as Heath Ledger. <laughs>